Next talk in the session will be given by Professor Stefan Grabbe, the director of the Department of Dermatology at the Medical Center in Mainz. He's the vice spokesperson of the SFB that is co-organizing this session. And he will be uh, talking about targeting of antigen-presenting cells for tumor immunotherapy. Professor Grabbe, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to um, briefly um, um, summarize what we found using, again, um, a similar approach that Dr. Hennings um, was, uh, was describing already, targeting dendritic cells with uh, multifunctionalized nanoparticles for tumor vaccination. Now, again, I don't need to summarize uh, for this audience much about the rationale, but uh, it is clear that, especially for a person who is living sort of both in the murine as well as in the human world, um, that murine tumors differ from human tumors quite, quite significantly, especially because they are usually monoclonal and have little clonal diversification due to their rapid growth um, that doesn't leave, leave time for that. So, in general, uh, vaccine responses in mouse models are strong and long-lasting, but in humans they are generally weak and transient, and any kind of peptide or protein-based vaccines in any human tumors have failed so far. So there is definitely a need for better vaccines and also a need for better antigens. Um, now, we have gone to, uh, to use nanoparticles that are commercially available by uh, Milteni um, Biotech. They make uh, dextran iron oxide nanoparticles, and they were, uh, they were uh, decorated with uh, an antigen over um, CPG as an immunoactivator, and then uh, DEC205 as, um, as a targeting agent for dendritic cells. Um, and as you can see here, dendritic cells in vitro readily take up these nanoparticles, both passively, that's the light gray bar, as well as actively DEC205 specific. And also in vivo, um, you can detect nanoparticles um, on, on these dendritic cells. Um, the uh, nanoparticles activate dendritic cells, as shown here by surface uh, co-simulatory molecule expression. Um, they also induce uh, potent um, proliferation of both uh, CTLs as well as T helper cells in vitro, and this can be blocked by uh, blocking uh, antibodies, soluble blocking antibodies against DEC205, so the uptake and the simulation of T cells is um, targeting antibody specific. And um, also in vivo, they, uh, when inject into mice, um, they induce potent uh, CTL activity against the antigen ova, uh, as shown here, by killing of uh, ova-carrying target cells. Now, then we felt en encouraged to, to do clinical experiments, and um, as, you can show, as you can see here, the uh, trifunctional vaccine that carried both ova as well as CPG as an immune activant, and in addition was targeted with an antibody uh, DEC205 to dendritic cells, as we thought, uh, gave us pretty profound tumor control in this therapeutic model. So here we injected the tumor first, and then uh, after the tumor has uh, taken, um, we injected the nanoparticles um, and were able to control tumor growth um, quite easily and uh, very profoundly. Almost all of the mice survived in this, um, in this experiment. Um, so we were positively surprised by this result since it compared favorably to other similar approaches that have been published in the literature. And then um, we thought, well, obviously we thought uh, th that the nanoparticles would target dendritic cells they become activated, they present their antigens to T cells, leading to T cell activation, both in terms of helper cells as well as CTLs, and that would then uh, eradicate the melanoma. But as we were looking into the mechanism of action, we re realized that, yes, we could detect nanoparticles in situ on dendritic cells, as shown 
here, for example. But uh, for example, most of the, cell, of the nanoparticles in spleens here um, were somewhere else. And when you, here's an enlarged picture, when you, when you now counter stain with a, a B cell antigen marker, then uh, it becomes clear that many of the nanoparticles actually co localized predominantly in the B cell areas of the lymphatics. Um, so given the fact that we had a dendritic cell targeting antibody, we were quite surprised by this, by this result. And then we um, did further experiments showing that this only occurred in the presence of serum, that in vitro um, B cell binding was only uh, observed when the nanoparticles were put into preabsorbed with serum. Um, and then we uh, assessed the, the serum corona, the protein corona, and as shown here, the, uh, the reads were, uh, were pretty consistent. This is um, quinduplicate um, um, analysis, and we can see that, that the reads in the MS uh, was pretty, pretty consistent. And in our top 20 list of the proteins that, that were coupling uh, or that were coating our nanoparticles, many were um, associated with the complement pathway. And as has been mentioned earlier, complement uh, opsonization is one way that, for example, viruses use to, inter, uh, to enter uh, cells. And so we were wondering whether this is a mechanism that's in place here as well. So um, we then uh, uh, could formally demonstrate that complement C3 is uh, the major component that actually mediates uh, binding of this nanoparticle um, to B cells since, um, as shown on the right side here, um, CC3 uh, deficient serum as well as, um, as MBL deficient serum that's a, a lectin uh, a component of the complement system that's also necessary to be activated in this uh, fashion. In both cases, incubation with serum that lacked these complement components did not lead to B cell binding. Um, and again, uh, incubation with, a, with an antibody against the complement receptor 1, 2 on B cells, that's CD 2135, uh, effic efficiently blocked um, binding of the nanoparticles to B cells in vitro, as well as in vivo, but Fucoidan, uh, which we thought might also play a role, uh, given the fact that scavenger receptors might be uh, involved, had no effect here. Um, oops, wrong. Um, and we also realized that this wasn't a property, the complement binding wasn't a prop property of uh, this particular dextran-coated nanoparticle, but for example, other such as starch-coated uh, nanoparticles would do just the same, whereas non-lectin um, uh, nanoparticles such as silica beads here wouldn't do this. This, this is work by Lutz Nun who showed that. Um, now, these nanoparticles now bind to B cells as well as to dendritic cells. Question is, do the, the B cells also get activated just like the dendritic cells? And as shown here, on the right side again, surface marker expression of, ben, of B cells go up just the, way, the same way as the dendritic cell surface marker expression does. Um, the B cell uh, uh, then respond with immunoglobulin production, both IgG1 as well as most prominently IgG2A, which is associated with the Th1 immune response. And that can, again, be uh, inhibited or blocked by an antibody against a complement receptor or by using um, um, complement deficient or MBL deficient um, um, B cells. Um, now, does complement now activate uh, immune responses in uh, mice that are being injected with the nanoparticles? We couldn't find any, uh, both in terms of apoptosis as well as in terms of cytokine re release. Uh, we did not see any systemic effect of um, nanoparticle binding to complement receptors. So our current working hypothesis now is that um, yes, we do get uh, 
dendritic cells to bind the nanoparticles. They get activated, stimulate T cell uh, uh, responses against the melanoma. But we also get um, complement uh, opsonized on the surface of our nanoparticles, with, which would then bind to B cells. And uh, not only dendritic cells, but also B cells get activated, maybe produce antibodies or contribute to antigen presentation. And that, in turn, uh, will um, together eradica eradicate the melanoma. Um, so, this is just one example how um, a nanoparticle that has an antibody against dendritic cells um, is in vivo redirected, actually, by the protein corona, in this case containing complement C3, um, to another cell, in, in this case B cells. And then um, this has functional consequences in vivo. And we believe that in this case, both the dual activation of dendritic cells as well as B cells may contribute to the potent Im immune effects that we see. And uh, so our current hypothesis is that it might not be uh, completely desirable to have a, a nanoparticle target to very specific but minor proportion of antigen-presenting cells in vivo but we feel that if we can address uh, a large group of antigen-presenting cells and diverse uh, antigen-presenting cells, resulting in diverse immune responses that are polyvalently sort of attacking the tumor, this might be a better outcome uh, than a very selective and specific DC activation. Thank you very much for your... Excellent. Stuff and very interesting work. So you see massive uh, translocation to, to B cells, and this is desired uh, to your. Uh, well, it opinion. was by by chance, and in, in, in the beginning it wasn't <laughs> desired at all. We yeah. were very disappointed that okay. we didn't see our nanoparticles targeting exclusively uh, the dendritic cells that that they were supposed to target. Um, but then as we went on and, uh, and investigated this effect, then we realized that sort of, again, by chance, we were lucky that they were targeting B cells as well. Yeah. So in terms of activation stimuli, what would you like to deliver to B cells? Also TLR agonists or yeah. antigens or both or something else? So B cells can also potently present antigens. Um, they uh, present antigens, sort of the, the classical textbook knowledge is they present antigens to prime T cells um, most prominently, whereas dendritic cells are those cells that are uh, most effective in priming naive T cells. Um, but uh, yes, they can present antigens. They can be activated by uh, numerous TLRs, um, and they, uh, they express TLR9, for example, uh, which uh, we triggered using CPG in this case. Okay, thanks. Very interesting. Other questions, please? What's the role of uh, antibody production for, in this case? Or is there, is there also a role for antibody production as you tar yeah. target now? We don't know. Um, we are investigating this at the moment using um, B cell deficient mice as well as B cell proficient mice that just are deficient in, in, in antibody production. And those genetically modified mice are available, and we will be able to answer that question soon, I hope. There's one question in the back. Mm. Hi, thanks for a nice presentation. I have a question about the CD8 priming. Uh, I think I missed one part of the slides. What kind of priming assay have you run to see that CD8 priming, or it's just dendritic cells, prime T cells, or like? Um, well, we, uh, we used uh, a priming assay in vivo, um, where we injected uh, the nanoparticles and then um, injected um, overcoupled target <coughs> cells, and then assayed. And these target cells um, were uh, fluorescently labeled. And at the same time, we also injected um, non-overcoupled same target cells that were labeled 
with a less intense fluorescence. And we could then see that there was a selective killing of those uh, target cells that were carrying over. And this is a, a commonly used assay to look for T cell priming CTL activity in vivo. Other questions? <clears throat> um, I would actually have one left. Is what happens if you don't use the DEC two hundred five antibody anymore? If you so, if you have, don't have then DC targeting anymore. So do, do we do we need this network of these mm -hmm. two things together? We haven't done this exper well, we have done this experiment in the tumor setting, and there the non-target and non-DEC205 carrying uh, nanoparticles were less uh, active. They had some activity, but they were less active as the one that was carrying mm -hmm. antigen plus adjuvant plus uh, the tar targeting uh, antibody. So we do believe that we need the dendritic cells in place. But in another setting, um, where we were trying to selectively activate B cells, um, for example, to treat allergic diseases um, such as asthma or anaphylactic shock. Uh, there you don't need the DEC205 mm. uh, antibody, and if you do uh, inject these CPG plus antigen-coated um, nanoparticles, then you can very much uh, uh, improve the situation of allergic mice uh, and ameliorate asthma as well as uh, basically prevent anaphylactic shock due to overinjection. Mm. So we need a network <coughs> of the cells sometimes. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs>